Well, well the, the Lancet paper was a product of a, an ad hoc committee uh, looking to advance the diagnostic criteria for Alzheimer's disease, trying to take into account the idea that uh, a person doesn't just wake up with Alzheimer's disease, that there's a substantial prodromal period uh, during which uh, a person is impaired. Uh, currently, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease rests on having the dementia, the dementia being cognitive impairment plus impaired activities of daily living. I think one of the more uh, immediate benefits uh, for this is to put potential diagnoses within a clinical trials framework. Uh, there is a need to, uh, for us to be able to assess therapeutics earlier before the onset of dementia and in fact uh, uh, before the onset of, uh, of mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's disease. So here within the clinical trials framework the combination of a typical memory impairment associated with very early Alzheimer's disease, such as episodic memory, with a memory impairment, with a biomarker, helps to both refine the sample and identify patients early on uh, who may be able to benefit from, uh, from a new treatment. Uh, I don't think there is an official group. Uh, this group is a, a, the group led by Bruno Dubois is a group that is uh, uh, that has met several times before to discuss diagnostic issues. The uh, United States Alzheimer's Association has also sponsored uh, work groups to look at uh, diagnostic criteria for Alzheimer's. I think there, there's several factors that uh, make this new. First, this is being advanced as, as a lexicon or as a dictionary to take into account and to try to order the vocabulary involved and the nomenclature involved in talking about uh, Alzheimer's disease. And it's an advancement off of this group's discussions about diagnostic criteria for prodromal Alzheimer's disease that they offered some time before. And that's basically Alzheimer's disease before the dementia, keeping in mind that uh, dementia is important in, is an important criteria in the current diagnosis of uh, Alzheimer's disease. So that's one important advance, offering language to talk about uh, the pathology of Alzheimer's disease uh, Alzheimer's disease before the dementia and language about at risk states. The, the second thing that's important is bringing biomarkers front and center. There's been uh, a tremendous amount of recent research on possible biomarkers uh, for Alzheimer's disease. These biomarkers are pathologic and neuropathologic correlates. Would this 50-year-old have an episodic uh, memory impairment? If he does, then according to the Dubois crit uh, criteria being proposed, one would then want to be able to identify a potential biomarker. Uh, it's vague on what that biomarker might be. Uh, a physician could consider doing a, uh, a lumbar puncture and obtaining uh, uh, cerebral spinal fluid for beta amyloid and for tau. However, there are two current issues with that, and that is one, there are no clinical standards for these assays. These assays are still at the research level. Uh, the next is even when you get it, the criteria for low um, uh, low A beta or high tau are not certain. And finally, with a 50 year old, we may or may not expect, and we don't have the knowledge to know whether to expect that A beta 
uh, would be uh, would be low. That's an example of how these criteria might be used and the uncertainty involved in that. Uh, another way of approaching uh, the biomarker is through uh, uh, FDG PET imaging, um, looking at uh, glucose uptake and looking for a characteristic pattern that's associated with, uh, uh, with early Alzheimer's disease. A 50-year-old may or may not uh, have that. So we know a little about this and the criteria take into account two kinds of so-called preclinical conditions. One is an at-risk uh, condition where someone may be asymptomatic, not have a memory impairment or not have a cognitive impairment, but be biomarker positive. Uh, in, the in the currently proposed lexicon, that person would have pre-symptomatic at risk uh, Alzheimer's disease. As you mentioned, the issue here uh, is twofold. One is that they may be at higher risk for Alzheimer's disease. The other is that they don't have Alzheimer's disease currently. And um, uh, I guess there's several other aspects to it as well, including the possibility that they may not develop Alzheimer's disease. So here, clearly a diagnosis of pre-symptomatic at-risk Alzheimer's disease could be detrimental in that you may be labeling somebody with an illness who will not get the, that illness. On the other hand, in early onset familial Alzheimer's disease caused by uh, autosomal, autosomal dominant uh, genes with 100% penetrance, for instance with the PSEN1 uh, gene, uh, you can talk about pre-symptomatic Alzheimer's disease that, uh, that will uh, evolve into uh, cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's dementia uh, in a few years. Uh, there, there's experience uh, amongst the families of, uh, of people uh, with that genetic uh, uh, mutation. Okay. Um, 